welcome, welcome. Come on in. Take a load off. Come on in to Sunday School Teachings. My name is Imelda Trevino Ingman. Today we journey through the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah led the third return of the exiled Jews back to the land of Israel. As a cupbearer to the king of Persia, he held an important administrative post in the government. So today, let's journey together and learn more. The book of Nehemiah is the 16th book of the Bible and has 13 chapters. The author of the book of Nehemiah is unknown, but probably Nehemiah himself, with Ezra serving as the editor. The purpose of Nehemiah is to record the history of the third return to Jerusalem after captivity, telling how the walls were rebuilt and the people were renewed in their faith. So let's journey further. As we read through the book of Nehemiah, we can break it down into three sections. The first seven chapters is Nehemiah and the building of the new walls. Chapter 8 through chapter 12, Nehemiah and Ezra combine forces. In the final chapter, which is chapter 13, Nehemiah reinforces what he had originally reinforces the law. So let's take a look at the first seven chapters. Again, Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king of Persia. In this first chapter, he introduced himself and recounts a time when he asked his brother and men that were returning from Jerusalem how the exiled uh, Jews were, who had returned back to Jerusalem, how they were faring. And they said the walls of Jerusalem had not, you know, been rebuilt. They were still burned and uh, down and had not been rebuilt. And so he said, his brother tells him, they're not faring well. Shocked by the news, Nehemiah broke down and cried for many days. He went on a fast and prayed to God. During his prayer, Nehemiah called, to, to, called on God to hear him and his intercession for the Israelites. He also admitted that they had been that he had been unfaithful and corrupt. Also that along with himself, everyone in um, his father's household had also been disobedient and sinful. While serving one day while serving wine to the king of Persia, King Artaxerxes, Nehemiah, asked him if he could return to his homeland, Judah, and help rebuild the city. The king granted Nehemiah's request to go and rebuild Jerusalem. He even gave him an armed escort and resources. In chapter 3, Nehemiah lists the process of building the walls. You know, Nehemiah, the Jews, and the priests were all working together to rebuild Jerusalem's walls. Then opposition comes up comes upon them, the enemies of the Jews, led by Sanzbalat of Samaria, plot to attack the Jews, which necessitates the Jews to work with weapons in their hands. Nehemiah also sees that the Jewish nobles were oppressing the poor, and he forces the cancellation of all their debt and mortgages. While previous governors had been corrupt and oppressive, Nehemiah himself had been righteous and just. Also, Sanzibalat accuses Nehemiah of plotting against the king of Persia, and he, is, and he is opposed even by the Jews, nobles, and nobles and prophets, but the wall is still completed. Completed so fast that it scares the enemies because there is no way the walls could have been repaired so quickly unless God's hand had been at work guiding them and supporting them every step of the way. Now let's shift into the second section, chapter 8 through 12. Nehemiah assembles the people and Ezra read to them the law of Moses. Nehemiah, Ezra, and the Israelites institute the Feast of Booths in accordance with the law. The Jews assemble in penance 
and prayer, recalling that their past sins. God helps them and his promise and helps them and his promise to the land. The priests, the Levites, and the Israelite people enter a covenant, agreeing to separate themselves from the surrounding people and keep the law of Moses. All of the Levites and leaders gathered to dedicate the wall. They made offerings and rejoiced, and men were appointed over the storehouses. Now, the final chapter, chapter 13, after 12 years, Nehemiah returns to Susa. He later comes back to Jerusalem and finds that they, there has been backsliding in his absence. He takes measures to enforce his earlier reforms and asks the Lord for the Lord's favor. The various themes found in the book of Ezra. Let's take a look at them. First, vision. Although the Jews completed the temple, the city walls remain in shambles for the next 70 years. These walls represented, represented power, protection, and beauty to the city of Jerusalem. They were also desperately needed to protect the temple from attack and to ensure the continuity of worship. God put the desire to build the walls in Nehemiah's heart, giving him a vision for the work. Does God have a vision for you? Are there walls that need to be built today? God can give us a vision and a desire to build. With that vision, we can mobilize others to pray and to put together a plan into action. Prayer, both Nehemiah and Ezra responded to problems with prayer. When Nehemiah began his work, he recognizes a problem, immediately prayed, and then acted on the problem. Prayer is still God's mighty force. In solving problems today, prayer and action go hand in hand. Through prayer, God guides our preparation, teamwork, and diligent efforts to carry out his will. Leadership. Nehemiah demonstrated leadership. He was spiritually ready to heed God's call. He was carefully, he was a careful, he was careful at planning, teamwork, problem solving, and courage to get the work done. Although Nehemiah had tremendous faith, he never avoided the extra work necessary for good leadership. Being a godly leader is not just gaining recognition holding a position, or being the boss. It requires planning, hard work, courage, and perseverance. Positive expectations are never a substitute for doing difficult work. In, and in order to lead others, you need to listen to God's direction in your life. Problems. Problems were definitely a theme in Nehemiah. After the work began, Nehemiah faced scorn, slander, and threats from the enemies, as well as fear, conflict, and discouragement from his own workers. Although these problems were difficult, that did not stop him. That did not stop them from finishing the work. We must recognize that there are going, there, there are, we must recognize that there will always be conflicts when we're doing the Lord's work. And when problems arise, we must face them squarely and press on to continue what God has asked us to do. Repentance, revival. Although God had enabled the people to build the wall, their work wasn't complete until they rebuilt their lives spiritually. Ezra instructed the people in God's words. As they listened, they recognized the sin in their lives, admitted it, and took steps to remove it. Recognizing and admitting sin are not enough. Revival must result in reform, or it is merely the expression of enthusiasm. God is not, God does not want half-hearted measures. So as we journey, I thank you because as we journey through the book of Ezra, you watch, watch Nehemiah in action and determine to be a person on whom God can depend on to act for him in the world. I encourage you to be an individual that God depends on. There are simply 13 
chapters here, I encourage you as a family to read and journey together. One of my favorite uh, scriptures in the book of Nehemiah is chapter 6, verses 15 through 16. Son, on October 6th, that wall was finished just 52 days after we begun. When our enemies and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. They realized that work had been done with the help of our God. So I want to thank you again for journeying with me through the book of Nehemiah. Until next time, be blessed.